Let's talk about a very important topic in the world of Raspberry Pi hardware, SD cards. These are essential to getting your Raspberry Pi up and running. They are what the OS or operating system are installed on and contain all the data, configuration and software needed to make your Pi function. What we're looking at here is the downloads page from the Raspberry Pi website. As you can see, we have a variety of operating systems that we can choose from. Please bear in mind that this page may look slightly different when you are viewing this video as it is updated frequently, but the concept should remain the same. First, we see Noobs, which is a collection of OSs catered for newbies, then the ever-popular Raspbian, which is the most installed OS for Raspberry Pi. Scrolling down, you can see we also have some third-party operating systems that we can choose from. Here, we can see versions of Ubuntu to choose from, Windows 10 IoT Core, which at the moment is the only Windows-based OS created that runs on Raspberry Pi. Then we have OSMC and Libre Elec, which are distributions that serve as media entertainment centers to collectively store, organize, and distribute your movies, music, TV shows, and photos. So what's a good guideline for the capacity in terms of size of the SD cards that you will need for these distributions? Here I've created a summarized breakdown for you that can serve as a guide. Noobs, Raspbian, Ubuntu, and Windows 10 IoT Core all recommend SD cards with at least 8 gigabytes of capacity for successful installation and operation. Of course, if you can go a little bit higher with a 16 gigabyte or even a 32 gigabyte SD card, that would be even better. Raspbian Lite, which is a lean, slimmed down version of Raspbian based on Debian, requires much less capacity and only needs a 4 GB SD card. Some of the other third-party installations such as OSMC and Libre Elec are built to be less resource-intensive and can operate on less than 1 GB of space. A 2 GB or a 4 GB SD card would suffice and might be the best for those. If, however, you intend to store your movies or media on the SD card itself with these distributions, you'll need a bigger SD card. The standard practice, however, in configuring these media players is to connect to a USB-attached hard drive or USB memory stick or access a network-attached storage module over the network via various protocols such as SSH, Samba, SFTP, or even AirPlay. What's my recommendation? Well, I say go with a 16GB SD card which would allow sufficient storage and flexibility for any operating system of your choice. Let's now address another concept you might hear about when referring to SD cards, the SD card class. When you hear the term class, you can think of it as essentially the right speed for the card. As an example, a class 4 card typically writes at 4 megabits per second, whereas a class 10 card can conceptually be rewritten with speeds of up to 10 megabits per second. Now, you may think that a class 10 would always perform better than a class 4, as the write speed is faster. This, however, is not always the case because write speed is achieved at a cost to read speed. Faster write speeds usually imply longer seek times, which affects the rate at which the data is read from the card, resulting in slower performance. What's my recommendation here? Well, for later versions of Raspberry Pi, it's better to go with a Class 10 SD card. Windows IoT Core, as an example, requires a Class 10 card. Overall, a Class 10 should give you the best operation under most circumstances. Older models of the Raspberry Pi may typically operate fairly well on lower class sizes. Let's now talk about the physical size of SD cards. There are two main sizes that you have to look out for. They are the full-size SD card and then the micro 
SD card. The original Raspberry Pi Model A and Model B use the bigger full-size SD card, while the newer versions of Raspberry Pi, such as the Model A+, B+, Raspberry Pi 2 Model B and Raspberry Pi 0 and Raspberry Pi 3 Model B use the smaller micro SD card.